Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to send the Behringer X32 via the auxes to Wave Super Act Performer so that you can insert Wave Super Act Performer on your left right bus, your mix buses, or your matrices, or even your channels. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, in a previous video, I was showing you how to get 32 channels from the inputs to send two waves super act performer and then back to the console. Now the benefit of this is this has the least amount of latency. And if you're running a buffer size of 32, that latency happens to be 5.9 milliseconds. Now, if you are wanting to insert waves on a mix bus, your main left, right, or your matrices, or even a channel individually, then this is gonna add about 0.37 more milliseconds of latency. But the benefit is that you can actually utilize this on the main left, right, your matrix, or your mix buses. Whereas with the channel method, it's not as simple to send a matrix or a main left, right to waves. So with this method, we can send up to six channels of audio to Wave Super Act Performer and then back to the console. Now, the other benefit of this is you can connect or disconnect that at any point in time to be able to hear the audio without waves or the audio with waves. So let me show you how to get this set up first. The first thing that I'm going to have you do is go to routing, and I'm going to have you go over to input. Now on our aux ins, we are going to go and select card one through six. Now this is going to give us the ability of processing up to six channels of audio through waves, but it's going to remove your aux inputs from the console. So if you utilize maybe aux five and six for an iPod or some computer music or whatever, then I would suggest that you select card one through four or one through two if you use three and four and five and six. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to get it set up with card one through six. But just know, if you want to still have your aux five and six available to you, you will need to do card one through four in this case. Select card one through six. The next thing we're going to do is tab over to card. Here on one through eight, I'm going to go and scroll down and select my aux one through six monitor. Now this selects the aux outputs of the Behringer X32. So just like with the aux inputs not being available to us, our aux outputs are also not going to be available to us because we are utilizing those to send to waves. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to just go and configure this inside of Waves. Now, if this is the first time that you're using Waves Super Act Performer, you will want to grant access to the microphone so that Waves Super Act Performer has access to the audio core to be able to process the audio from our board. If you have accidentally said no to that, we can simply go up into our Apple, go to System Preferences, go to Security and Privacy, we can then go to microphone, unlock, and make sure that Wave Super Act Performer is checked. Once we are in Wave Super Act Performer, we can simply go to setup. We can select our configuration of how many racks we want to use under our settings. For instance, I'm going to be running eight racks. And then we can go to audio setup to be able to select our device, which is going to be our XLive card. If you happen to have the XUSB or the XUF card, you would want to go ahead and select those in this as well. The next thing we can see is our sample rate at 48,000 hertz. Now, I always recommend running your Behringer X32 at 48,000 hertz unless there is a very specific reason that you want to be running it at 44.1 because 8% more latency will be added in your input and output and inside of waves and inside of plugins if you're running your console at 44.1. So make sure to go to setup and go to sample rate and change that to 48 kilohertz because this will ensure the minimum amount of latency for you with your Behringer X32 and waves. 
The next thing that we have is our buffer size. And I have another video on the latency of our buffer and all of the different latencies that we would get depending on which one of these we select here. Now, I always recommend using the minimum amount of latency or the smallest number of buffer size that your computer can handle. The smaller the buffer size, the more processor is going to be utilized. The larger the buffer, the less amount of the processor is going to be utilized. In some cases, you're going to need to select a larger buffer to ensure that you are tasking the processor correctly and not overtasking the CPU. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and select a buffer of 192 as I am doing a screen recording on this computer as well. Once we have done that, we are ready to patch any of our channels. So I have my vocal microphone here, and let's go ahead and bring up some gain first. Hey, check, 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 check. So we can go ahead and hear that coming through now. Check, check, check. If I was wanting to insert waves on this plugin, what I can do is I can press view in the configuration and preamp section with this channel selected. I can then go over to this sixth rotary knob and rotate down until we get to aux one. Once we are there, I can press connect. I can then press insert. And at this point, I'm talking to this microphone. We can see that there is input, but there is no output. And that's because we haven't routed it inside of Wave Super Rack Performer yet. So now I'm going to go over to Wave Super Rack Performer. I am going to type in here and call this vocal. And I'm going to go and find my input, which we can go to mono, X live, and this is input one. Once we have selected that, it's automatically going to route the output as well. So we can see that I have some meters here, check, check, check. And we can also see that I now have the audio coming back into the console here. And so now we can go insert really any plugin that we want to. So we could go and have some fun and go to my pitch shift and we could go waves tune real time. And I now have a waves real-time tuner for my auto-tune on my vocal. Or we could go and insert some of my favorite plugins. For instance, the F6 RTA. The F6 is one of my favorite plugins. This is a multi-band dynamic EQ. So not only can we make EQ adjustments and low-end and high-end roll-offs, but we can also do dynamic EQ, which is similar to compression but slightly different. Another one of my favorite plugins would be in the Dynamics, and that would be the CLA-76. This is an emulation of the 1176 compressor, and this is one of my favorite compressors for vocals. But what if we were wanting to have this Wave Super Act Performer inserted in on our left-right bus? Well, I'm going to go and select my main left-right, and we can press Home and Page Over to Config, and then here on our sixth rotary knob, we can go and select our aux three. So I'm going to select aux three. And because this is a stereo channel, it's going to select aux four at the same time. And I can press connect and then insert. And at this point, I don't have any audio passing through my left, right. It's going into the left, right, but it's not routed inside of waves yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to overview and on my rack, Eight, I'm going to title this main left right. And then on my input, I'm going to drop this down and go stereo, and I'm going to select input three and four. And at this point, now I have audio coming back into my console again. So I can go in and add one of my favorite plugins for my stereo bus, which is the SSL comp. This is one of my favorite plugins for a mix bus or a main left right situation. And so some of my favorite settings for a mix bus would be 10. We can either set this to auto or we can set this to 0.1 with a ratio of four. And then another plugin, which is my favorite to do, is a limiting plugin. Now this one does add slight amount of latency to it, but it makes it so that you can master the level of your mix to make the mix not as dynamic, which in some cases is really good. And so that is called the L2. And so we can see that the L2 adds 64 samples of latency. And so we have this L2 and this SSL comp now inserted on our main left, right. 
So we can see that if I go and talk into this microphone, we not only have our SSL compressor going, but we can also have our L2 limiter at the same time. Now the benefit of having these in the aux inserts is I can uninsert both of these just by pressing our insert button. And so now this microphone and my main left right is not going through waves. Now this is going to be helpful for you if in case your computer has an issue, starts maybe having some audio crackling because you're tasking the processor too much, or maybe your computer dies mid-show because you forgot to plug it in. We can simply uninsert those plugins very quickly by pressing insert on both of these, and then we would be back up and running for the rest of the show. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you do happen to have any questions, make sure to post those in the comment section down below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I will make on another mixer out there or on any of the Waves plugins that you're hoping that I will make a video on, please drop those in the comment section below because I'm always looking through those comments for videos that are gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com where I just released a brand new X32 Fundamentals course where I go through my favorite five fundamentals fundamentals that I believe any audio engineer should know to be excellent at running sound on their Behringer X32. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day.